I was finishing up doing some cleaning in my garage one night around 10 p.m. It's a single car garage, but was never used for parking, just for storage. For the longest time, it was a terribly unorganized mess, but I had finally decided to straighten it up. Before, you could barely walk in there, but after a week's worth of work, it finally felt like an actual room in my house again. There was a garage door, of course, and on the opposite end of the room, there was a workbench. On the side of the room, closer to the workbench, was an entrance to the basement, which ran adjacent to the garage. This particular night, I was stood at the workbench, going through some shoeboxes of small items, when I heard the knock. Three distinct knocks, evenly paced, very intentional, very human, and it was unmistakably done on the garage door. Not only did it sound like knuckles on wood, which was what the garage door was made out of, but whenever the garage door is moved in any way, the metal track that it sits on makes a very specific rattling sound. When this knock happened, that rattling noise happened too. And for some reason, that knock was enough to send me into fight or flight mode. Despite being completely safe in a room behind a very large door that could not be opened without my doing, I quickly made my way into the basement and closed the door tight behind me without looking back. I was thoroughly spooked. I looked up to find my mom standing at the top of the basement steps, looking a little confused by my sudden appearance. She asked me if I was alright. I'm fine, I thought I heard something, I said, quickly rationalizing that the knocking sound must have somehow been her. Why are you at the top of the steps? I asked, hoping there'd be a fitting answer. Oh, I just turned the garage lights on, she answered. The light switch for the outdoor garage lights was on the wall at the top of the steps. A massive chill ran down my neck as I realized the implication of this. If I had just heard the knock moments earlier, and my mom had just flicked the outdoor garage lights on, that means if someone really had knocked on my garage door, they witnessed the lights turn on. But a second, scarier realization hit me. That had to mean that someone was already outside my garage door, listening to me stalking me, knowing I was inside. And when my mom turned on the garage lights, the stalker mockingly knocked on the outside of the door in response, as if to say, oops, you found me. That was the only thing that made sense, and I hated that it made sense. I explained my train of thought to my mom and we both grew concerned. I came upstairs and somehow mustered the courage to actually open the front door and poke my head outside enough to peek at the garage door. There was no evidence of anyone having been there, at least from what I could see from my front door. There was no way I was going out there to get a closer look because next to the garage door there was a gate to the side of my house that led to the backyard. If someone really had knocked on my garage door and quickly wanted to take cover, they could have easily slipped through that gate to hide on the side of the house, and I was not having any part of that. Nope. Ever since then, I rarely go into my garage at night if I can help it. And, if I absolutely have to, I take great care to be as quiet as I possibly can. I never know who's listening. I renovated my bedroom last month. New carpet, new paint on the walls. To prep for the remodel, I emptied out most of the furniture in the days leading up to the carpet installation, naturally. The only thing left in there was my bed frame, dresser, desk, and chair. All posters got removed from my walls, the curtains were gone, I even took my closet door off its hinges. As a result, sound really bounced around in my room now. Everything echoed. I hadn't realized how much sound was absorbed by my curtains and my posters and all my other stuff I had sitting around. Anyway, I was falling asleep one night and I heard someone make a popping noise with their lips. You know, when you purse your lips and then release the pressure and it makes that little popping noise. This had startled me so badly that I immediately sat up in bed, looking around for the source of the noise. But I slowly started to assume that what I experienced was a sort of hypnic jerk. I had been reading up on it lately, because sometimes as I'm falling asleep I'll have a scary dream that jerks me awake. For instance, I'll just start to fall asleep and I'll have a dream that I'm petting a dog, and the dog suddenly snarls and jumps up to bite my hand. This causes me to flinch and I wake up in real life because of that dream. Sometimes when you're in this weird falling asleep phase, sounds that you dream can sometimes feel real, or at least sound real, so I chalked it up to that. But as I sat there trying to fall back asleep, I started to doubt myself. Had I fallen asleep? 
I started replaying the moments before the pop noise in my head, and I actually started to think that I had never fallen asleep to begin with. I had my eyes closed, sure, but I wasn't asleep. I got up and went across the hall to my dad's room and asked him if he had heard a pop noise, to which he said no. Then I asked him if he was playing any games on his phone, because the noise could have easily been some kind of mobile game sound effect. To my dismay, he shook his head. I went back into my room and settled back into bed. As I replayed the events of the noise in my head, continuing to decipher whether or not I had actually fallen asleep in the moments leading up to hearing the noise, I heard it again. I was wide awake, and I heard it again. I heard it bounce off the empty walls of my room, and it felt like it was right in my ear. I shot up like a rocket, and all of the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I was so sure the noise happened inside of my room because of the way it reverberated off of the walls. I felt it when it happened. And aside from that, it genuinely felt like it happened right next to me. Somehow, I fell back asleep after like an hour of being incredibly paranoid. Some days passed and nothing really happened, and I never did hear that pop sound again. But later that week, my dad did tell me he thought I skipped out on work because he heard my old desk chair creak during the day. I had that chair for years, and whenever you shift your weight in it, it makes a really obnoxious creaking noise. Apparently, my dad heard that while I was out at work. No one else home but him. Our bathroom light switch is kind of messed up. Something gummy got in there, so when you turn it on you have to wiggle the switch up and down a little bit for it to finally click into place and make the connection to turn on. With this in mind, if you turn the light on and don't wiggle it, the light will remain off most times. But it may spontaneously turn on as you're leaving the bathroom or maybe even hours later. At first, this was a little annoying and even a little bit creepy. But eventually my family became accustomed to it after we figured out what was going on and never really bothered to fix it. The trouble came when I entered the bathroom to brush my teeth before winding down for bed one night. When I walked up to the mirror, the light went out. It wasn't pitch black because the bathroom door was open and the hallway light was on, but it was nighttime, so it was still fairly dark. Unfazed, I went to the light switch to wiggle it to circumnavigate the gumminess problem, and that's when I saw that the light switch was in the off position. Then it hit me that the light had, in fact, turned off. The bathroom light switch had only ever had problems turning on with the gumminess. I flicked the light switch back and forth because my next thought was that the light bulb had burnt out as I heard a noise when the light went out. But to my surprise, the light went back on when I flicked the switch. It was not burnt out. My mind started to connect the dots and I realized that not only did the light turn from on to off seemingly on its own, but the noise I had heard was the switch physically switching off and it was in the off position as well. When I walked in the bathroom, it was most certainly in the on position. The light was on. I had gotten so used to the gummy light switch that none of this really hit me right away. I was a little weirded out, but I figured that all of the light switch wiggling had finally caught up to us and it messed up the wiring somehow. Later that week, something else happened. There are three LED candles sitting on the bathroom windowsill. Sometimes I'll use them in the shower and turn the lights off because it makes it kind of relaxing. One night, I noticed that one of the candles was on, and it was red. I thought that since the batteries probably got wet from being in the shower, it had appeared off but was actually switched on the entire time, and it finally made the connection. However, I realized that when the candles get switched off, they have a default color when they are switched back on, a light pinkish purple. It will always be this light pinkish purple until you physically grab the remote and change the color yourself. I figured maybe the LED broke, so I grabbed the remote and started cycling through the colors, but they all worked. Then, to be sure, I turned it over and switched it off, then switched it back on. As I expected, it turned light purple after being switched off and on. So this random red candle, falling in the same week as the bathroom light spontaneously shutting off, was very, very odd, especially since the color red is often associated with bad spirits. I didn't know what to think, 